Hey there folks, Mr. D here, and in this video we are going to introduce logarithmic functions. Now many of you have probably never seen logarithmic functions before, and that is okay. Uh, if you take a second to look at your calculator, if you're using a TI-84, over on the left side, if you look at that top row of number keys, you'll see right about there is a log button on the left hand side. Now logarithms are typically written as log with a base number of some other number. Now we don't really know what this means yet, but this would be read as log base four of five. Log base four of five. So four is the base of your logarithm, and five is what's called the argument. So now let, let's kind of get into what the heck does this even mean, right? And why do we care? So logarithms, Oh, we can skip that warm up here. Logarithms give us the ability to do inverse exponentials. If I were to take the example, we're going to kick it back to a few units. If I had the, the function 2x minus 3 and I wanted the inverse, well, I just switch x and y. And then my goal is to get y by itself. So I'd add 3 to the other side. I'd divide everything by 2. And there I go. I have an inverse function. If I try doing that with an exponential though, look out, right? If I try switching x and y to call this y, or x equals b to the y, there's really no good way for me to, to get y all by itself. Like how do I get it out of the exponent there? Some people might try to argue, well you just take the yth root, right? Because then those will cancel. All right, well, that's all fun and good. So you got y by, or you got b by itself, but now b is equal to the yth root of x. That doesn't make sense. So our goal is to get y by itself. How do I get it out of the exponent there? Well, that's where logarithms come in. So anytime you have a variable that is in the exponent, anytime your exponent is unknown and you need to solve for it, you're going to use something called logarithms. Now, logarithms... Right here I have y equals log base b of x. So log base b of x is the same thing as saying x equals b to the y power. One thing I want you to take note of, the base of the logarithm is the same as the base of the exponent. The base of the logarithm is the same as the base of the exponent. The next thing people get confuzzled with is, well, how do we go through and, and kind of figure out is it y here, x here, x here, y here? What's going on with that? Short answer is they just kind of switch positions. So whatever was first comes second later. Whatever was second comes first later. I personally have always adopted something called the loop and swoop method, which means I'll draw a loop around my base. So I'll loop my base, and then I swoop around the equal sign. So if I'm trying to translate this from one form to the other, it'll be base b to the y equals x. Or I could go backwards the other way. I'd draw a loop around my base. If I wanted to go to logarithmic form, the order in which I do this is log base b of x equals y. Again, we're going to get practice with these, so if that doesn't make sense right now, that is okay. Okay, so all we're going to do is rearrange these from logarithmic form into exponential form or from exponential form to logarithmic form. So for the first one, my base is 5 here. I have 2 equals log base 5 of x. 2 equals log base 5 of x. So I'm going to loop around my base. So it's going to be 5 to the second power equals x. 5 to the power of 2 equals x. And hey, I could solve that. For number two, my base is b. I have three equals log base b of 64. So my base is b. Go around the equal sign. So b, then three, then 64. b to the third equals 64. We could solve that too. What number to the third power is 64? That's just four. Number three, log base three of one ninth equals negative two. My base is three. I'll loop around the equal sign. So 3, negative 2, 1 ninth. 
3 to the power of negative 2 equals 1 ninth. Well, yeah, that's just a true equation right there. Well, now let's try going the other way. Let's go from exponential form into logarithmic form. And remember, this is going to be log with your base. Then it's log base of something, that's called the argument, equals, this is going to be your exponent or your solution. Okay? So that's what we're going to end up doing here. Let me get that out of the way so we don't get confused. So for the first one, I'm going to circle my base, go around the equal sign, 12x2. That's the order I have to write things in. So log base 12 of x equals 2. Now when you write these, this little 12, the base, it should be a subscript. When you're writing these, some people will get in the mistake of writing log 12 to the x power. That's not the case. This is a subscript. So log base 12 of x equals 2. Think of subscripts almost like an exponent but dropped low instead of raised high. Next up, my base is b. I'll swoop around the equal sign. So b, 125, then 3. Log base b of 125 equals 3. Last one, my base is 10. Swoop around the equal sign. Log base 10 of 1 tenth equals negative 1. So all we did there is just wrote it in one language to another. Nothing too crazy. <clears throat> well, now let's get into some evaluations. <coughs> buckle up, fellas. Buckle up. We want to evaluate these, but our calculator is broken. I'm going to imagine that all of these are kind of set, to, set equal to an imaginary variable x, okay? And what that's going to give me the permission to do is say 2 to what power is 16? So 2 to what power is 16? Well, I could solve that. I can solve that relatively easy. 2 to the 4th is 16. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. On number two, we'd have five to what power is 125? Well, that's just five to the third. Number three is saying 10 to what power is 100? That's just a two. Number four, 25 to what power is five? Hmm, well, I know the square root of 25 is five. And if I wanted to write the square root as an exponent, well, the square root is the same thing as saying 25 to the 1 half power. So my solution here would be 1 half. Uh, 7 to what power is 1 over 49? Well, I know 7 squared is 49, but 49 got flipped to the bottom, so it's going to have to be a negative second power, so negative 2. 36 to what power is 6? Well, again, same square root logic there, so x would equal 1 half. Now, 7 and 9, they're both going to be kind of along the same line of logic. I'm going to have 2 to what power equals the fifth root of 2. But I'm going to rewrite the fifth root. Instead of saying a radical form, I'm going to call that the one-fifth power. Well, now it come, kind of becomes easier to see. If my bases are the same on each side, the exponents also have to be the same. After all, that is what the whole equal sign means. Whatever's on the left is the exact same as whatever's on the right. So x would equal one-fifth. A number eight, four to what power is one-sixty-fourth? Well, I know four to the third power is 64, but it got flipped to the bottom. So it's going to have to be a negative exponent. And just as a reminder, negative exponents flip things across a fraction line. And number nine, three to what power is the same as the seventh root of three? Well, the seventh root is, same, is the same as saying three to the one-seventh power. So that will just be one-seventh is my answer. Now on the next screen, I've got a few examples. And there, there are a few that I just want to kind of highlight. Okay. If you want to pause this to, to write these down or take a picture of it, go for it. And the few that I want to highlight are numbers 1, 6, and 8. The reason why 
is any time the base and the argument match, so 7, 7, 12, 12, half, half, it's always going to be a 1, because you're basically asking 7 to what power is 7? 1 half to what power is 1 half? 12 to what power is 12? Well, that's just 7 to the first power, or 12 to the first power. Others that I want to kind of key in are problems that result in a 0. Well, general shortcut there, if your argument is ever 1, 8 to what power is 1? 8 to what power equals 1? Well, anything to the 0 power is just 1. So if you see, regardless of base, if you see 1 is the number for your argument, it's always going to be a 0. The next type to focus in on is going to be number 4 here. And this one is kind of similar to uh, 1 and 6 and 8. So log base 4 of 4 to the 5th, that, that's essentially me saying 4 to what power is the same as 4 to the 5th power. Well, since the bases are the same, I could just say x equals 5. That's what's happening there. <coughs> and the last one to bring special attention to is number 5 here. Log base 5 of negative 25. If I tried solving 5 to some power equals negative 25, I could try and try and try, but I'm never going to succeed. You can't put in any exponent to get a negative 25. You can't use exponents to get negative solutions. And now graphically, I mean, think of that, right? If I were to graph 5 to the x, that is an exponential growth. That means it has an asymptote at 0. It's never going to hit a negative value. Never, never, never. All right, and we're going to end on these seemingly challenge problems. They're really not too bad. So what I want you to do, pause the video here if you need to write these down or take a picture, do what you got to do. Anytime you have logarithms nestled within logarithms, you want to start from the innermost portion and kind of work your way outward. Okay, so for all of these, we're going to start inside the parentheses and work our way out. So number one, I need to first figure out 7 to what power is 7. Well, that's just 1. So this is now log base 3 of 1. Well, we already discussed, if 1 is my argument, then this is automatically 0. Because 3 to the 0 power is 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Number 2, if we work from the inside out, let's see, 2 to what power is 32? Well, that would be 5. So I need what is log base 5 of 5. So 5 to what power is 5? Well, that's just 1. 5 to the first is 5. All right, home stretch, here we go. Log base 2 of log base 3 of 81. Well, first, let's figure out 3 to what power is 81. That would be 3 to the fourth power. So now I need to figure out log base 2 of 4. And that is asking 2 to what power is 4? Well, 2 squared is 4. All right, folks, that is it. That is all for this video. You know the drill. If you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, good luck, have fun, be safe, roll tide.